At this time, we want to welcome everybody to Mount Moriah Baptist Church the way we do it down here.
All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Diamond Gregory, and I am here to introduce the academic spotlight for this quarter. Up first, we have Kevin Slay, who made the A honor roll. Now we have Dorthanius Slade, who made the AB honor roll. These are the honor roll recipients for this quarter. Um, congratulations, Kevin and Dorthanius Slade.
we thank the choir for that song, I Came to Tell You What Jesus Said. And now it's time to hear a word from the Lord. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we acknowledge your presence in this place. We thank you, O God, for how you moved mightily thus far in this worship experience. Lord God, we thank you for how you have encouraged our hearts through the songs of Zion that, that's sung by our choir. We thank you, O oh God, for this time of preaching. It is our prayer, O oh God, that this word be uplifting unto your people, glorifying unto you. It is our prayer, O oh God, that you be lifted up. And by you being lifted up, you would draw all men unto you. It is our prayer, O oh God, that some person that may not know you as the Lord and personal Savior come to know you in a more intimate manner through this preached word. It's in your Son, Jesus' name, that we pray and we give thanks that all God's people say, Amen. Our scripture for this morning's worship experience is Genesis, the 19th chapter, verses 23 through 26. Genesis. Chapter number 19, verses 23 through 26. And it reads, By the time Lot reached Zoar, the sun had risen over the land. The Lord had rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he threw those cities and the entire plain, destroying all the living in the cities, and also the vegetation of the land. But Lot's wife looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. But Lot's wife looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. We need your We would like to use for a sermonic title, Let It Go, Let It Go. The more I observe people whom I have the pleasure of meeting and interacting with, the more I realize that people typically want the same things out of life. People want a roof over their heads, food on their tables to get an education, or to acquire skills that would allow them to make a living, most people want some money in their pockets. People, regardless of their race, age, gender, educational level, political affiliation, they all pretty much want the same things out of life, to live a good and comfortable life. Most people don't want drama in their lives. Most people want a peaceful and comfortable life. It was in the pursuit of a good life that Lot chose to live in Sodom. When he was traveling with his uncle Abram, whom we will simply call Abraham, because his name was later changed to Abraham, Lot's herd of animals kept clashing with his uncle's herd of animals. To keep the peace, Abraham said to Lot, you choose where you want to go, and I will go in the opposite direction so that we won't continue to clash back and forth. Lot looked around and saw that the land in the east part of the Jordan River, towards the Jordan River, particularly the valley of the Jordan River, was well watered. It was rich, it had rich soil, and it was covered in lots of crops and other vegetation. It was very pleasing to look at. It was lush like the land they knew of in Egypt. In the valley of the Jordan River, it was seemingly a place to be. This is where Sodom was. It was a place where commerce was taking place. It was, it was a place where Lot could imagine that he would have a good life, a comfortable life, a life of peace, and a life of plenty. It was where Lot saw that he could have 
opportunities. It was where Lot could see himself improving his plight in life. So Lot decided to move to Sodom because Sodom looked good. Before you begin to judge Lot, before you begin to play Monday night quarterback and begin to criticize Lot, I would like to remind you that you too have made, you, you too have moved into some spaces and places because the opportunity looked good. You, you got connected with that girl or that lady because she, she had a double D, a, a weight, a, a, 30, a size 30 waist, and she looked like Carrie Washington or Beyonce or Rihanna. You hooked up with that boy or that guy because he had swag that was irresistible. A boy's like Barry White or a, and a six pack. And he had, and he had biceps like Popeye the Sailor Man. You could, you have connected yourself to some people simply because they look good. You pursue something and opportunities because they looked good. Some of you have left one job to go to another job opportunity because it looked good on paper. You bought that house that was at the max of your budget because it looked good. You bought that expensive car because it looked good. You spent money that you did not have and you, and you racked up a high credit card bill all because you wanted to look good. Many of us are just like Lot. We want immediate gratification. We want the bells and the whistles right here and right now. We want the big house, the three car garage, two kids and a dog. All because we want to look good and have it all seemingly together quick, fast, and in a hurry. But I've come to remind somebody that everything that looks good is not good for you. Everything that's glitter is not gold. Everything that's sparkle is not a diamond. Just because it's sparkle doesn't mean that it's a diamond. It could be a cubic zirconia. A cubic zirconia looks like a diamond. It shines like a diamond. It sparkles like a diamond. But it's not a diamond. A one carat cubic zirconia costs about $20. A one carat diamond costs about $1,500, $3,000. You've got to make sure that you don't just go for what looks good because because you just might be following after or chasing after a cubic zirconia. You know what a cubic zirconia is. It's when you are getting, when you think you are getting one thing, but then you get another. You thought he was going to be your knight in shining armor, but he turned out to be a dead beat. He wanted you to take care of him rather than helping you to come up in life. You might be connected to a cubic zirconia when if she only wants what she can get from you and not help you build anything. You might be connected to a cubic zirconia if you bought that luxury car, but two or three years later, you're in and out of these shop because mechanical issues. You might be a friend, I mean, you might be friends with a person who you can describe as a cubic zirconia. When times are good, they're always right there in your face and in your space. But as soon as things get rough, they are nowhere to be found. Sometimes we pursue things in life because they look good, they feel good, they smell good, they make you feel like you're on cloud nine. Just like life, we oftentimes go after things that look good. Samson was a good man, but he fell afraid to Delilah because she looked good. David had Bathsheba's husband killed because he saw Bathsheba uh, bathing one day. He said, I have got to have her because she looked good. People do strange things sometimes because they want something that looks good. The grass may look greener on the other side, but what you don't know is that grass is not grass, but it's just sod. Things are always as they seem. You got to be careful about chasing behind things that look good. Before you go after something that look good, maybe you better pray. You better pray before you leave. 
Before you jump, you better pray. Prayer will help you to see, be, be, see beyond what you see. Prayer will help you to see what you can't see. Pr through prayer, the Lord will tell you, yeah, he smells good and look good, but guess what? He's no good for you. Prayer will help you discern that all she are, although she appears nice, but, but just because she appears nice doesn't mean that she is good or nice for you. She just might be after what she can get from you. That person, prayer will help you to see that person is not trying to build anything with you, but only his or her only own bank account. Prayer will help you to escape the traps of gold diggers. Prayer will help you to escape the traps of people that mean you no good. Before you jump, before you leap, before you move, you better pray. Right. Ephesians 6 and 18 says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions. That means in everything, in every situation, you ought to pray. If you want to know where you ought to go next, Pray. If you want to know what you ought to do next, pray. If you want to know where you ought to go next, pray. If you are stressed and in distress, pray. If you feel overwhelmed, pray. If you have two good, reasonable choices to choose from and you don't know which choice to choose, pray. Pray without ceasing. The Bible says, is anyone among you in trouble? He says, let them Pray. When your back is against the wall, you ought to pray. When you need help, you ought to pray. When the problem is big, you ought to pray. When the problem is seemingly small, you still ought to pray. We ought to pray without ceasing. Why? Because prayer will show you what you can't see with your natural eyes. Lot didn't pray. Lot just went after what looked good. So Lot established himself, established a life for himself in Sodom. He got married and some, some, some historical text tells us that he had four daughters. Two of them were married and two of them were not married. married. Lot, Lot and his family were living in Sodom and having a seemingly good life. That was until the angel of the Lord came to Sodom and it declared, came to Sodom to destroy the city because of its wickedness. Sodom was known for how poorly they treated foreigners, which caused God to want to destroy the whole town. I know what you heard, perhaps, in some contexts in which people say that Sodom and Gomorrah was, was destroyed because of their sexual immorality. But actually, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because of how they treated foreigners. It was not about sexuality. It was about how they treated foreigners. But they used sexual violence to disrespect foreigners. So Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because they used sexual violence to disrespect and dishonor foreigners. So when the angel approached Sodom, Lot happened to be near the entry gate. Not knowing immediately why they were there, he did recognize that they were not from Sodom. So he offered for these angels, these men, to stay at his house. When the city townsmen found out that Lot had guests lodging with them, the men of the city wanted to physically take advantage of these foreign, foreign men who were angels. The angels struck the mob of men with blindness and told Lot and his family to leave immediately because the city was going to be destroyed. Lot was only able to get his wife and his two unmarried daughters to flee Sodom with him. He tried to get his married daughters to go come with him and their, and, th and their families to come with them and his two future son-in-laws to come with him, but they refused. This brings us to our first point that the Lord would have us to highlight. Progress sometimes requires you to leave some things behind. Progress sometimes requires you to leave some things behind. The city of Sodom was about to be destroyed. 
Lot tried to get all of his family members out of the city, but some of them refused to come with them. So Lot had to make a tough decision. It was either Lot stayed, where, stayed there with them and died with them, or he had to choose to leave without them and live. When God is calling you to a different destiny, sometimes you can't take everybody with you. When God is calling you higher in him, sometimes you have to leave the boys at the pool hall behind. When God is calling you to a more spectacular destiny in him, sometimes we have to leave your homegirls behind. Sometimes some friends are just for a season. You can't take everybody to your next season. Let me say that again. You can't take everybody into your next season. Some people and some things you're going to have to leave behind. You can't take everything into your next season with you. You're going to have to leave some things behind in order to spring forward into God, into God, into your God-given destiny. You, you have to do some spring cleaning. You have to throw some things out. You have to get rid of some things. You have to leave some people behind. You have to change some of your old habits. Everybody and everything can't go with you into your next season. You will have to leave some things behind. When folks ask you why you don't call them anymore, just say, I'm walking in my new season. When people say you don't come out, come around anymore, just say, I'm in my new season. When God tells you you got to move, you got to move into your new season. If folks move with you and they don't move too slow, that's fine. They can come along. But if they hesitate, but if they try to slow you down, if they try to block you, if they're trying to tell you why you can't do what you're wanting to do, if they're trying to, if they're, if they're trying to tell you why something won't work, just leave them behind. You can't take everybody and everything into your new season. If folks don't want to come with you, just dust your shoulders off and keep walking and keep moving and keep moving forward into your new season. Some people and some things you will have to leave behind. You can't take everything and everybody into your new God-given season with you. Lot left two of his daughters and their families behind. His daughters were precious to him. That lets us know in this new season, you will have to leave some precious things behind. You have to leave some precious people that you hold dear to you right now behind. To grow spiritually in the Lord, you're going to have to give up some precious time sleeping or watching mindless TV. You're going to have to leave some old habits behind. You're going to have to stop watching or watch less of has and have nots. You're going to have to watch less football and basketball. You're going to have to spend, you have to spend less time scrolling on Facebook and Instagram. You're going to have to give up some things, leave some stuff behind so you can have more time to Read your Bible. More time to pray. More time to meditate. More time to sit in silence before God. Some things you will have to give up to go into your next season that God has for you. In this next season of development, you will have to spend more time reading and learning more about your craft. You will have to spend more time you have to spend less time dreaming about what you want to do, but more time studying how to make what you want to do come to pass in order to get to the next place or season that God has in your life. You're going to have to give up some things. If you want a more fit body, you're going to have to give up some mac and cheese. You're going to have to give up some pizza. You're going to have to give up pork chops. Oxtails, 
neck bone. You have to give up eating rice, yam, and mac and cheese all in one meal. Just pick one out of the three starches. Some things you have to give up if you want a fit body. You can't keep doing all the same things, eating all the same way, and keeping all the same people around in your life if you expect a different result in your life. That is called insanity, doing the same things but expecting a different result. Some of you have been doing the same things but expecting different results, but Today, the Lord is calling you to give up some things and some people so that you can get to your next season, so that you can get to your next destination that he has for you. God has houses that you did not build. I don't know about you all, that, but that makes me excited. God has houses that you did not build. He has vineyards that you did not plant. But in order to get these houses, in order to get these vineyards, you've got to give up some things and you've got to leave some people behind. Although Lot had a good life in Sodom, when God told him to move, he moved. The second point that the Lord would have to highlight is that once you decide to move, you got to realize that your future is greater than your past. Your future is greater than your past. When Lot, his wife, and his two unmarried daughters left Sodom, the, angel of the, the angels said to them, do not look back. That's a word for somebody on this morning. What God has called you out of or what God has called you from, you ought not to look back. That thing that he has called you out of is now in your past. If God has called you out of something, it must be that he has something better for you. He must be that he has something greater for you. The Bible says your latter days shall be greater than your former days. Your latter days shall be greater than your former days. That means your future is better than your past. What's ahead of you is better than what's behind you. Your latter shall be greater than your former. So therefore if God Focused 
on your future than your past. Stop looking back at, at the way things used to be. Stop rehearsing in your mind what that person did to you or said to you or how that person treated you. Stop looking back at how things were when mama, daddy, grandma, or grandpa was here. Yes, those were good times. But now it's time to create some new traditions. The family does not have to disintegrate just because grandma died or grandpa died. Someone else can pick up the torch and create new traditions. Families can still meet up and have Sunday dinner pre-COVID or post-COVID. <laughs> I got caught myself tonight. Pre-COVID or post-COVID. But we got to, someone got to step up, pick up the torch, and help your family create new traditions. Sometimes change is good. Sometimes a shake-up is good. In order to move into your future, to build a better future, you have to stop looking back at your past. Stop worrying about how you did it, how you did on the last test, but focus on how you would do on the next test. Don't worry about how you messed up the last time, but because that is in the past, learn from your past mistakes and now move forward and focus on the test and the, all the opportunities that are in your future. Stop dwelling on that last relationship, but focus on preparing yourself for that next relationship or that new relationship. Stop worrying about how things were pre-COVID and focus on how we can still worship God and praise God and show our love to God despite of COVID. The Lord's church will thrive despite the COVID pandemic when we focus on our future and not the past. The Lord's church will grow and will thrive and we'll have vibrant worship services when we focus on our future and not on how things used to be. The past is gone. The present is now. And God wants you to know that greater is in store for you when you keep your focus on your future and not your past. Because Lot's wife looked back, she was kept back. She died just like everyone else did in Sodom. Looking back will keep you stuck where God wants to take you from, deliver you from, and rescue you from. Unlike Lot's wife, Lot was able to move forward to where God wanted him to be because he was willing to let some things go. Lot let go of the familiarity of Sodom so that he could get to where God was, was wanting to take him. Lot let go of the emotional and social ties that he had in Sodom so that he could be in the will of God. Lot was willing to let it go so that his bloodline would be saved from destruction. Question for you on this morning. What are you willing to let go? Are you willing to let go of, of the need to always be right? Are you willing to let go of the attitude that you have to have it your way or the highway? Are you willing to let go of always feeling like you have to be in control? What are you willing to let go? Are you willing to let go of, of, of having these be so familiar to you all, at, at all times and knowing what's going to happen next? Are you willing to let go and walk a step out of faith and walk into a brighter future that the Lord has for you? We got to stop dwelling on the past, move forward, and let some things go. Stop dwelling on the hurt and let it go. Stop dwelling on how people mistreated you and let it go. Because, because if you don't let it go, you become bitter and you become mad and become angry and that begins to fester over years. And before you know it, you're this mad old bitter person and you've already forgotten about what you're mad about. We got to let some things go. In order to move forward, to, we have to let some things go. Isaiah 43 and 18. Uh, Isaiah 43 says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new 
thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness, streams in wasteland. In order for us to get the new things that God has in our lives, we got to stop dwelling on the former things. We got to stop dwelling on the past and move forward into the, our God given destiny. We got to let go of unforgiveness. We got to let go of how we think life ought to be. For the Bible says, I know the plans that I have for you. A plan to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Let me read that again. It says, I know, this is God speaking, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. But to get to that future, but to get to those plans that God has for you, you got to let some things go. You got to let some things go to get to so hard. God had to let go of what was familiar to him. You got to let go of what is familiar to you. You got to sometimes let go of what makes sense to you. You got to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him and God will direct your path. This path that He's put you on, it is a faith walk. God didn't know exactly where He was going, but all He knew is God said, Lead, stop. Sometimes you got to step out of faith and lead from your heritage. Somebody on the sound of voice who 
don't know the Lord as your Lord and personal Savior. I would encourage you, my brother or my sister, if you don't know, if you don't know the Lord as your Savior, give the Lord your heart. Pray this prayer with me. Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I make you my Lord as well as my Savior. My brother, my sister, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, I would encourage you to let us know by sending us a message on Facebook or via our YouTube channel. Or you may email us at mountmariah at South Carolina at gmail.com. Or you may send us a message by way of our, our website as well. You might be watching this morning. You may not be connected with the church home. If you would like to make Mount Moriah your spiritual place of growth and development, you may let us know that as well by through one of those mediums that I mentioned before previously. And we will be delighted to welcome you into our faith community here at the Mount Moriah Baptist Church. Now at this time, there may be somebody who's watching who's in need of prayer, or you may have some cares or some issues of life that you want to lay at the feet of Jesus. Pray with me at this time. Father God, we come into you in your son Jesus' name. We thank you, O oh God, for the reminder that you have a bright future ahead of us. You have a you have plans to give us a future and a hope. A plan to prosper us, oh God. And for that, oh God, we are grateful and we are thankful. And God, we are grateful and thankful for the reminder that in order to reach the future that you have in store for us, we must let some things go. We must leave some things behind. God, help your people to leave hurt behind, to leave low self-esteem behind, to leave a victim mentality behind. Help your people to leave hopelessness behind. Help them to leave disappointment behind. Help them, oh God, to leave the emotional baggage behind so that they may spring forward so that they jump, walk, move into the destiny that you have for them. Help them to move from where they are to where you want them to be, oh God. God, we thank you that despite how chaos broke out in, in Sodom, you came to the rescue of your son, Lot. You came to pull Lot and his family out of the way of destruction. We thank you, O oh God, despite how chaos break out all around us. You will always come to our rescue. You will always come to lead us and guide us and to provide a way of escape for us, O oh God. But God, we know that you can only point us in the right direction. You can only attempt to lead us in the right direction. But, for, but in order for us to get to where you're leading us, we must let some things go. We must leave some things, some habits, some ways, some mindsets, some people behind. God, we are grateful for the new beginnings that you have in store for us. We are grateful for the new, the new features that you have in store for us, oh God. We are grateful for the new lands that you have in store for us. We are grateful for the Zohar that you have in store for us in each and every one of our lives, oh God. God, we thank you for where you're taking us. We thank you for where you're leading us. We thank you, God, for how you're leading us out of one place into another place, oh God. God, now, we now at this time, we turn our attention to those who are duty-bound to pray for. We are grateful, God, that you are continuing to uphold Sister Tansy Sumter and family as they grieve. We are grateful that you continue to uphold Sister Rachel Lassen and family as they grieve. 
good, great for you. You continue to uphold so many others, oh God. The, the family of Joseph Green, as they continue to breathe. But God, we're grateful as you uphold our community and our church as we continue to live our lives despite the restrictions of COVID-19. God, continue to uphold my Mariah this community with your righteous right hand, oh God. Continue to allow my Mariah to be a beacon of light in this community. And when you do these things, oh God, we will forever continue to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray and we give thanks that all of God's people say amen. Amen.
thank God for the change that he's made in our lives. And we know that we've been changed because of what God did for us on that hill called Calvary. As is our custom on each first Sunday of every month, we remember what God did for us, what Jesus did for us on that hill called Calvary by way of communion. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your ultimate act of love. We thank you, O oh God, for while we were yet sinners, you died for us. We thank you, O oh God, for how you looked beyond our faults and you saw our needs. We thank you for you leaving your home in glory, being born of a virgin, dwelling among mankind to show us the way and to sacrifice yourself on the cross to shed your blood for sinners like us, oh God. God, we are appreciate, we are appreciative of your ultimate act of love. And God, we thank you for this opportunity to remember and to reflect of what you did for us, that precious gift you gave to us by giving us access to be reconciled back unto you through the blood of your son Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Next Sunday, by way of the World Wide Web, Facebook, or 